Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image.com. This is the Fuji XP80. Doing a hands-on review here. This is vlogging style with the XP80. So I've got it in my left hand, shooting me. The lovely uh, autumn scenery behind us here in Dungannon, Ontario. So we're going to do some shots with the camera. And I'm going to show you what I'm shooting as we go along here. Filming some uh, HD, this is 1080 HD footage in auto straight out of the Fuji XP80, the waterproof, shockproof little gem from Fuji. So we're going to take a picture of the bird feeder behind me, the little wooden one. I don't know if you could see it there. And uh, we'll show you uh, the images from the XP80 here of the bird feeder. Let's have a look at the macro setting on the XP80 and see how it does with a photo now. Behind me here is a rosehip bush or tree. Um, for those of you that don't know, rosehips are super healthy, super high in vitamin C and a very good source of where to get your vitamin C from. Mum grows those rose hips and she harvests them. I'll show you a picture of them. We'll take a couple pictures. Um, and then she can uh, dry them and crush them down into a powder, whatever she wants to do with them. And it's a great source of vitamin C. But let's see how the XP80 does with uh, a shot of the rose hips. And then actually we'll see if we get a little video segment of the rose hips as well. some of the rose hips close up on the tree Let's see if I can move it around for you here the camera actually seems to be doing better exposing and focusing in the um, video mode on this tree than when I'm taking photos of the uh, the rose hips and the tree itself which is probably par for the course a lot of cameras have a hard time in a situation like this where we have a backlit situation with the sky behind us but the video interestingly enough seems to be better exposed in this uh, with the camera and the auto mode than the uh, photos do me here there's some very colorful sumac uh, bushes or trees that are going very red we'll get a couple shots of that and show you some images from that as well those of you that are not familiar with a sumac, these are the fruit, I guess you'd call them, that come off or grow on the sumac bush or tree. Just doing a few uh, video sweeps here of them for you. You can actually pick these and make like a lemonade, uh, like a sumac lemonade, if you will. Some of these are looking a little raggly because it's uh, getting into later fall here and it's cooler up this way than it is uh, further down south. This beautiful open field behind me here and a lot of the fall colors and I just want to show you the difference between the wide on this lens this is a five times lens and the zoom We've got a uh, corn uh, trucks going by from harvesting the fields you can probably hear that in the background but I'm gonna take a wide angle shot and then I will show you the full zoomed in shot from the scene behind me in the field There's some plants that are starting to show the uh, ravages of the cold here. This is the wide angle setting. I just want to show you, we'll go, we'll zoom right in. And you can see as we come in here, in close on them. Hopefully the camera will acquire some focus here. Let's see if we can get a little better focus. Um, it's having a hard time getting some focus on that. I'll see if I can get in a little closer and get it to focus. So we're not picking up focus. Let's see if we can uh, show you a photo of this um, and just show you what it looks like uh, using the, I guess it would be the auto macro setting on it. There's a couple of maple trees behind me with some really nice orange and yellow bright colors here in uh, the fall in Dungan and, and I'm just going to walk over there and do a close up of some of the leaves and uh, show you some of the shots from that. Thank you. 
There's an apple tree behind me here, and I don't know if you can see, but there are still apples on the tree. I'll turn here, and we'll see if we can zoom in while we're shooting the video, and uh, see if we can pick up an apple there on the tree and have the camera, how it acquires the focus. Looks like it's acquiring it pretty good. We'll move in closer as we're shooting the video here. And there you can see one of the apples on the tree here. I may be too close for it to, uh, at fully zoomed out to acquire that focus properly. We'll stop the video at this point and uh, take a couple. Crossed the street and gone down the road a little bit, and behind me here is the Dungannon Pioneer mausoleum museum am i saying that right dungannon pioneer memorial mausoleum uh sort of a museum anyways what's great about this is there is an old graveyard here and some great oh we got a car going by some great headstones and tombstones uh, and if you're like me, you like walking through old graveyards and seeing how old some of the stones are and some of the really neat uh, stories that are told on those. Let's go in and have a look. As we're coming into the graveyard here, you can see in this one little corner over here that um, it seems as though um, some people have been in remembering their loved ones and uh, we've got a lot of flowers and things so I thought what we'll do is we will go and uh, get some photos of the flowers and the uh, tombstones as well just to show you some shots from the XP-80 here in the cemetery a really neat looking tombstone back over there with the white on it just kind of appeals to me almost looks like an obelisk we'll go a little closer and have a look and see what that is so this one's actually January 6 1884 is the date on it and it was an infant uh, died two years and 20 days old uh, so I can't make out the rest of the lettering because it's so worn on here. But uh, it's always sad when you see this, but, uh, you know, very old tombstone. Um, a lot of very weathered and kind of interesting to look at. Interesting to see the history, too. I want to point out, too, as I'm shooting the XP-80 here, I'm basically leaving it in SR Auto. So everything's auto. It's choosing what it needs to do. Um sometimes it's having some issues as pocket cameras will with backlighting and things like that sometimes it's putting on the flash and I have cancelled the flash a couple times for a couple shots uh, we'll go over here there's another interesting looking um, tombstone we'll show you it and I'll show you what it decides to do with the flash or without the flash and then I'll cancel it if it uh, does put the flash Okay, so that was some shots there. You could see the one, it did use the flash, and then I disabled it on the camera. Very quick and easy button to suppress the flash. And I think I got a better picture. It was a situation where the camera didn't make the right decision. The photographer makes the better one. This is the end of uh, day one. The battery's actually dying here on me. Uh, so it doesn't have a really strong battery. I don't know, I've been shooting maybe for 20 minutes, half an hour. I'll have to double check that. Um, but the battery's already starting to go. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of video here. So to be fair, with a very small battery, very small camera, that's probably what sapped the uh, power out of it. But uh, overall, really enjoying the XP80 so far. Seems to be a nice little camera. We'll uh, put this together as a uh, video upload, look at all the photos, and um, stay tuned for day two or the next day that I'm out shooting with the XP80, the Fine Picks XP80 from Fuji. Thanks, folks.